Welcome to this special edition of Few Trades webinar entitled Fear of the Unknown, the Bloody Sell-Off. So for today, we will discuss what happened to the markets. We'll start with um, global markets, then a quick update on Asia and commodities. Then lastly, we will give you an update about what happened on the Philippine stock market. So let me introduce first myself. I'm Justin Tembrevilla, the research head of Unicapital Securities. So I think na yung iba sa atin napanood na yung first uh, webinar ko which is uh, I talked about PE and how you can use it on your investing strategies. So you can see my uh, background there on the slide. And we go now to our agenda as previously stated. So first start with uh, Wall Street so if uh, you can see uh, US now has the most uh, cases at around 164,000 with death toll of 3,100 however may recoveries naman sa kanila at around 5,500 um, efforts there are being made such as mass testing and lockdown of some states Kasi I think sa US, uh, New York State has the most number of cases accounting for around 50% of the total case count. So ang effect nito sa markets is, you can see on the on the chart to your left, is na wipe out halos lahat ng gains during the presidency of Donald Trump. Kasi ito yung pinagmamalaki ni President Trump during his um, term. Now for his possible re-election is that the bull market for Dow Jones would be sustained. However, around um, March, when WHO declared that COVID-19 is now a global pandemic, ito na nagsimula yung mga investors um, exiting the market, trying to keep cash. Sabi nga nila kasi cash is king. So when you prepare for a pandemic like this, you need to stock up on essentials such as food, water, and supplies. Sa US, I think, in demand yung tissue paper aside from alcohol. But of course, the, go the U.S. government enacted um, a $2 trillion stimulus to help uh, recover from this global pandemic, which is coronavirus. Then yung chart naman sa right, makikita natin yung um, volatility index or ito yung tinatawag nilang VIX. Now, when this chart spikes, it means that um, investors are on panic mode or... Um, may recessionary signals. As you can see, yung VIX index, it almost, this uh, March, it almost touched the level uh, during 2008 financial crisis or near the level of 80 based on the chart. Next, we go to Asia. So I selected some markets here, uh, namely Japan, South Korea, and China. For Japan, ang concern kasi, currently Japan um, they postponed na yung Summer Olympics. Ito yung concern talaga because it could be a hotbed for the spread of the virus with a lot of delegates coming to Tokyo to participate in the Summer Olympics. Good thing is it, uh, International Olympic Committee along with the Japanese government decided to postpone it until 2021. But with Japan kasi, uh, yung case count nila, dumami talaga not in their uh, country talaga. It started sa isang cruise ship, yung Diamond Princess, wherein it recorded around um, 700 cases and resulted to 10 deaths. And ang concern pa for Japan is, ang, ang median age kasi ng uh, Japanese is, is around 47, similar to Italy na nasa 45. So ang concern it, is it could be another um, Italy, wherein sa Italy kasi ang cases more than 100,000 and recorded the most deaths at around 11,600. So since uh, mature din yung population in Japan, baka matulad sila and luckily na contain naman, uh, the efforts are bearing fruits for Japan. So kahit pa paano, konti yung case count, konti rin yung fatalities. Also for South Korea, oh by the way, if you can see the chart to your left, yung um, main index nila, Nikkei 225, we're seeing now a U-shaped recovery around um, March 
starting March 6. So this is not the the optimistic case of a V-shaped recovery, pero yung UK is okay na rin siya for more for um investors as a sign signal for um bounce. Then we go to South Korea. Where in this is the model that we want to emulate where in uh nag, nag mass testing sila and na contain nila yung epicenter ng virus nila yung isang religious group doon based in Daegu yung isang building doon na ano na nila na disinfect so the initial um, result ng mass testing is nag surge yung case count nila but of course with mass testing ma ma alleviate mo yung or ma contain mo yung spread ng virus kaya even if malaki yung naging malaki yung case count nila at the start yung fatalities hindi ganun nag progress so it resulted to more recoveries and as you can see sa stock market nila main index the cospi down 22% year to date and we're seeing somewhat of a v-shaped recovery then last but not the least china shanghai composite down 10% year to date so of course we know that china is the epicenter of this coronavirus sa kanila nag-start to around uh, January 7 um, ito yung first case na ni record nila and uh, around the same month, Yubei province was put on lockdown, so the main concern with Yubei province and Wuhan city is, I think this is a second tier city wherein there are a lot of manufacturing companies based here, so when this virus first um, erupted may mga ilang nagsara agad like um, Hyundai and I think Apple has factory also in Ube province so once they put it on a lockdown nagkaroon na ng disruption in supply chains so if dito ina-assemble isang product maybe yung sa first stage ng mga supply chain yung mga raw materials nagkaroon ng congestion dun so dumami raw materials hindi mapadala sa Ube for assembly then na-affect na yung ibang um, yung supply chain like yung supplier of uh, raw materials and other processes along the way but for China they've been um, recording positive news such as uh, neto just last week restrictions in Yubei is now lifted even um, president Chinese president Xi Jinping has already visited the city but uh, I, as of date China's recorded around 3,200 fatalities for this virus and a case count of close to 83,000. So we go to developments around the globe. Uh, most countries will extend their lockdown beyond April. And for the Philippines currently, we're on enhanced community quarantine until April 12. So we have yet to determine if this would be extended or not. Then for Japan, Eto, we've seen this in a lot of countries that their government, government are enacting on a quick stimulus to spur up economic activity. So for Japan, they are looking at around 149 billion stimulus package. And as mentioned, the U.S. has extended ng social distancing until April 30 by the order of President Donald Trump. Also, uh, Moscow in Russia will be on lockdown starting March 31, affecting 12 million residents and again another cruise ship I think this is the third or the fourth uh, Zandam will is uh, struggling to find a port because it could be another hotbed of the coronavirus so just a quick update on the commodities so for crude we're seeing a steep decline coming from around uh, 65 dollars per barrel during the start of the year now we're seeing it hovering above 20 dollars per barrel actually nakisabay kasi yung issue kay crude when the virus first erupted when um saudi arabia and uh, opec plus with russia they they have uh they did not come out with a deal during their last meeting at last opec meeting at vienna also uh what saudi arabia did is it planned to pump more oil or it launched a price price war against Russia so kung makita nyo during uh, around 
February nagkaroon ng or March nagkaroon ng steep decline. Yon as a result of a failure to agree on further supply cuts. And of course, with uh, most countries on a lockdown or quarantine, you can see cars on the road. You can see manufacturing companies uh, in full operate in full capacity of of their operations. So you can deduce by that na wala masyadong demand for crude for oil and as a result prices continue to go down kasi with, uh, with the epicenter of the coronavirus at China one of the top importers of crude na apektuhan talaga yung uh, yung crude market So we go now to Philippine markets. You can see here on the chart some um, developments. So we were optimistic during the first week of 2020 as a start of a new year, start of the new decade. However, when the volcano erupted last January 12, um, ito na isa sa mga black swan events natin or yung mga unforeseen na um, malaki yung magnitude sa market. So when the volcano erupted, uh, property stocks fall, particularly those who have exposure in Calabarzon area, so yung sa Tagaytay Highlands, and even I think banks had a bit of concern uh, in that area as well. Parang some analysts are thinking how much uh, loans or deposits accounted for the Calabarzon region, but upon initial estimates, hindi naman masyadong malaking exposure. Then, a few weeks later, ito nag na yung coronavirus natin, which has become a global health emergency according to WHO by around end January. Then, CBSP naman naging uh, re reactive naman siya sa events. So, it cut rates similar to what uh, some central banks did, particularly in the U.S. or in the U.S. Fed, they, they didn't... They did a 50 basis points emergency cut. But CBSP naman, good thing is, hindi siya off cycle. So it in line siya sa during monetary board meetings. But when the virus erupted or kumalat na sa Philippines, this is when Governor Jocno implemented the 200 basis points cut on reserve requirements, which could spur up around... Um, 180 to 200 billion in liquidity which um, very positive for banks so along the way uh, we've seen some developments in some companies for PAL uh, it decided to cut jobs because of the impact of coronavirus with um, air travel very limited nowadays so to further save costs kasi alam naman natin si PAL na it's uh, struggling in its operation so it decided to uh, retrench people to further save costs then uh eto si kung makikita niyo yung charts um, around march we've seen steep declines for the PSCI especially when in announced na yung enhanced community quarantine and when i think markets were closed for two days march 17 and 18 and when it reopened, uh, na trigger agad yung uh, circuit breaker natin na wherein when when the local index goes down 10% lower from its previous close, magti trigger yung circuit breaker for a uh, 15 minutes halt yung session. Then it will resume afterwards, pero wala nang another circuit breaker for the day. So just this year, we recorded three circuit breakers. And the very first uh, was recorded no financial crisis pa of 2008. So imagine just this year, meron tayong mga circuit breakers na nangyari every day for two days straight. Then we had a very uh, steep decline of around 700 points wherein PSCI closed 13% lower. So to alleviate that, um, the Department of Finance um, commanded that the financial industry must remain in operations even if in uh, under skeletal even if under skeletal workforce so gaya ng nakikita nyo ngayon 
um, trading is ongoing but on a shortened session at around or until 1 p.m. Uh, that's that goes the same for the bond markets and currency markets but hanggang I think 2 p.m. sila also on the fiscal side uh, what the government is doing is it signed around 266 276 billion emergency powers uh, the the lower house approved it and of course the uh, president would have to sign it right away also on the monetary side BSP will give 300 billion lifeline so how would they use it we don't know yet we want um, clear figures on how they will allocate those big that big uh, amount so of course what what the investing market wants to see is a quick um, implementation in a uh, accountability on or even transparency on where those funds will go through so we go now to share price performance of PSEI stocks of course index is down 33 percent year to date uh, we're far on the lower end as compared to peers kasi nakita nyo si, si South Korea si Japan 19 percent 22 percent down year to date tayo down 33 percent and we have a loan gainer for the PSCI which is PLDT so later on sa, uh, sa next slides natin makikita nyo kung why PLDT and Globe is faring better as compared to other stocks and even pure gold so next slide daily average value <coughs> So you can see when uh, when they implemented the shortened trading session, um, mas mataas pa rin yung mas mataas suddenly or surprisingly mas mataas yung volume natin, averaging around 6.6 .6 billion per day. As compared nung January na full day session pero nasa 5 billion lang 5.5 billion and we barely make it to 6 billion for January, but uh, nung March. Tayo, we average around 6.7 6.6 billion but on the downside most of these are net foreign selling so of course in a in, a, in times like this uh, investors would want to have or would want investors are uh, they prefer to be cash strapped mas gusto nila may pera in case na since emergency to health, health crisis they want to stack up on cash to buy their medicines their essentials whatever they need so that resulted to foreign exodus foreign funds um, exiting the market so we go now to our uh, sector outlook so ia outline natin dito yung yung view namin for the sector during the in the light of COVID-19 so for banks we're still positive because of course um, one of the few industries that remain business as usual during this enhanced community quarantine also we are well supported by the accommodative uh, central bank rules such as 200 basis points caught in reserve requirements and also with the rate cuts to support the industry so ang concern kasi for banks is yung balance sheet nila because I think the central bank and the DOF enacted na i-prolong i muna yung uh, payment for interests for some businesses of course na lalo ngayon naka-lockdown most, most establishments are closed so yung overhead nila yung interest expense nila hindi nila ma-shoulder so nagbigay ng lifeline ang BSP and DOF to, to extend or to waive for, for, for one month just to support uh, these uh, small and medium enterprises but for banks I think we believe that healthy pa rin yung balance sheet position especially for those big banks they can afford um, to absorb this event given their hefty loan books and their deep provisions in case um, loans turn bad but on the downside we see um, lower credit growth for this year 
because of course there's no there's not much economic activity outside as most people prefer to stay indoors also lower non-interest income ito yung mga fees from trust from deposits from um, branch banking operations also for trading gains kasi i think even the treasury department of most banks are on a skeletal workforce so you can see on the chart um to your left yung uh, loan loan growth for the industry or for the universal and commercial banks for the past um four years wherein you can see it trended lower starting 2018 so most analysts are thinking now for 2020 loan growth will hit single digits for the first time in the past few years so maybe we're looking at around uh, five to seven percent loan growth especially if uh, this quarantine is um, extended beyond April nevertheless um, banks will will exert extra effort to grow their um, loan book to eat to spur up credit activity with uh, with last year's activity kasi subdued then because of uh, delayed budget approval and midterm elections so I think most um, borrowers are should have exerted uh, effort as well this year for their financing needs then the chart to your right is your non-performing loans for the banks that we cover so this is quite um, normal for banks to incur um, bad loans of just around mga 1.2 to 1.4 percent of course um, outlier natin si east west bank because in its loan book ito sila yung may east west yung may pinakamaraming um, proportion ng consumer loans so ang tendency is it has higher probability that um, it could go bad or sour so kaya mataas yung non npl ratio nila pero this is normal for banks which has for banks which have high exposure in consumer loans then we go now to uh, consumer sector so we are neutral on consumer because I think not all consumer stocks are equal in a sense that um, some companies such as Pure Gold, RHI, and URC produce uh, or sells consumers or they sell consumer staples. So in the case of Pure Gold and RHI, retailers sila. Then for URC, they are manufacturer. So itong tatlong companies na to will benefit from the initial panic buying. As you can see naman yung mga may quarantine pass pag mag-grocery kayo to, to load up on your supplies mahaba yung pila sa mga groceries because uh, this is what people need in times of crisis the essentials but for uh, restaurant operators ito medyo na hit um, medyo on the downside yung effect ng virus because with mall closures in place uh, yung mga restaurants don't of course they won't be operating as well unless they offer um, takeout or de food deliveries so yung mga may press um, exposure doon si Jollibee, Maxis and Pizza but I think Maxis have started to close down their operations even if even on the food delivery side so yung delivery kasi hindi lang naman yung in-house there are also aggregators yung mga nakikita nyo ngayon yung food panda grab food so if yung company na yun may strong um, business relationship for those aggregators th this is very positive during um, this time of quarantine period but on a positive note since wala masyadong movement on the um, demand side prices of our raw materials will be stable due to price freeze also with the declining crude prices malaking factor to for inflation to stay um, within the BSP target or even on the lower end around 1% so we go now to the downside for consumer stocks of course there would be revenues foregone as a result of uh, mall closures for restaurant operators 
also yung mga companies na hindi masyado exposed sa or wala masyadong development on their digital and delivery channels mahirapan sila to recuperate once um, this ordeal is ended so first chart for the consumer is household consumption as percentage of GDP um, this country has always been a or the growth of this economy has always relied on uh, household consumption uh, accounting for around 74 percent of the whole economy so when this um, quarantine ends or when this virus has been eliminated consumer or household consumption would still drive this economy although we might see slower growth so for 2019 household consumption grew eight percent so we might see uh, another single digit growth but of course would still be accounting for 70% uh, of the total economy and next pure gold same store sales growth chart to your right so ito yung stock pick namin eh, for uh, COVID-19 sa consumers si pure gold because kung pupunta kayo ngayon sa mga pure gold stores and SNR mahaba yung queue ng mga tao just to buy essentials and as a result, uh, these stores might, rec uh, might record higher same store sales growth. But of course, it would normalize once, once uh, we return to our normal life. The next sector is property. So our tone changed. We are now negative on property as um, malls will be incurring lower revenues due to this one month closure also property developers have waived its rental fee for one month to its tenants and close to zero foot traffic during this lockdown period also hotels are closed offices um i think most companies are now on a work from home basis but even if my contract sila with their with uh their respective uh, space provider there could be a uh, vacancy especially if mag there's a risk kasi na, uh, people might lose jobs after this crisis because uh, some companies that are hardly hit by this coronavirus might be forced to close and if walang walang company there, there could be a vacancy in the office sector so as a result lower revenue contribution from the office segment also residential sales take up will slow down in the first quarter along with the delayed uh, project launches for this uh, property developers because i think even construction is put on hold so sayang nga na habang walang traffic pwede sana mag uh, ituloy yung construction ngayon but of course we care for the welfare of those um, construction workers so the chart is the short share of mall and hot hotel revenues to the total um, as of nine months 2019 so you can see top mall developers sm and robinson's land account for more than 50 percent of their total revenues to mall and hotels so uh we we might want to wait uh, we might need to wait for the first quarter results to justify this na there could be um, negative impact for for these property developers as a result of this COVID-19 however see si Ayala Landaman and si Mega World around 15% yung contribution ng malls sa revenues nila they rely more on offices and their project developments for their revenues So next we go to power we're also slightly negative for power kaya medyo may, may curl before yung negative slightly lang so the increase in residential demand uh, will not be able to offset the power demand from the shutdown of the businesses or yung mga institutional um, clients ni Meralco of course with um, most companies on limited operations 
yung mga factories yan, malakas yung yung demand yan for power and since hindi sila fully operating ngayon of course, um, yung sales ni Maralco for those companies would suffer as well and uh, based on our estimates top line might decrease by 1.3 billion for each uh, 2 percentage point decrease in gigawatt hours sold for Miralco. And we expect uh, first gen and Aboitis power to be more resilient given the relatively lower exposure to WSM of around less than 10 percent. So kung makikita niyo yung uh, sales mix ni Miralco sa chart natin where in residential accounts only 31 percent similar to industrial but yung commercial is accounted for the bulk at around uh, 39 percent so telco we are positive on this sector because as most uh, people stay indoors there's a, re a huge increase on mobile data demand so mobile data revenues could see some spike due to higher usage because of this uh, quarantine period this is also a um, good signal for um, Globe and PLDT as they seem to be resilient during this period but of course this could be short-lived. If, um, if this ECQ will run until April 12 then operations might normalize by um, second quarter. Also on the down, uh, but we go now to the downside, the construction of telco infrastructure could be delayed due to lockdown. Ito yung mga rollout ng mga cables, ng mga fibers to service um, more areas or to improve the speed. So since naka-lockdown ngayon, there won't be any work done for for the infra improvement on the telco sector. So the, the chart here right is yung uh, cumulative mobile subscribers wherein Globe has around 94 million and PLDT has around 73.1. Next is gaming. We are negative on the gaming sector because casinos are closed and could be one of the hardest hit among industries along with the limited tourist arrivals because even some countries are imposing travel bans and lockdowns as well. So um, of course there would be a steep decline on tourist arrivals as a result. So for oil, as mentioned during the commodities part, um, the crude sector will be affected both on the supply side and demand side. So supply, um, we, the world is awash with crude right now because walang, walang agreement between OPEC and Russia to, cut, to further cut supplies. Also on the demand, um, you can see walang demand, walang cars outside, even air travel is li very limited and um, industries are operating on a limited basis then so halos walang demand for crude right now and we expect huge inventory losses in the first half of 20 2020 with massive drop in crude prices. Also for local companies such as Phoenix, high leverage exposure makes it more difficult to absorb this impact. And just recently, Shell Philippines announced that it will defer its dividend payout. So yung mga um, conservative investors natin who are just wanting dividend payments, so they will be affected by this decision of um, Shell. So again, for infra, negative then because uh, wala masyadong construction activity during this lockdown period. Although it could be advantageous sana because um, walang, walang obstruction or anything na that could disrupt their operations. Also, uh, for Megawide, it will feel the impact most since 
at sila operator ng ano eh, ng Mactan Cebu International Airport. So with coupled with lower tourist arrivals, talagang uh, and e- even on their construction side, yung order book nila will shrink during the first two quarters of um, this year. So you can see your chart to the right is yung construction order book ni ng three construction companies natin, Megawide, GMC, and EEI. Wherein, um, for 2019, ano sana yun? Could be a recovery year, even if may delay budget, merong, um, there, there were ban on construction during the election period. But since, um, 2020, may coronavirus, it could be a reset year even also for the infra sector. Then for cement, we're also negative for the sector due to the slowdown in cement demand as majority of ongoing construction projects are halted indefinitely. So similar to um, infrastructure, during um yung 2018 sana could be a momentum boost but nung 2019 you can see to your right yung chart uh 2018 was a momentum boost and however 2019 delayed budget um stall in construction so nagkaroon ng decline on some companies like Holcim on their sales growth 2020 could be a fresh start sana but once uh COVID-19 spread there nagkaroon na ng um slower demand or slower sales growth for the cement sector also on their operations Semex Holdings and Holcim already stopped operations for some of their plants but once once everything uh, returns to normal naman uh we expect demand in construction projects which would result to higher sales growth for cement then for ele- electronics we are also negative for this sector because if uh, you've observed nung, nung sa China palang nag-spread yung coronavirus with um, Wuhan City uh, one of manufacturing hubs of China Doon palang disrupted na operations eh. So what more nung nandito na sa atin, nung sa Philippines meron na ring spread ng coronavirus. So logistics and supply chains are disrupted along with uh, re- resulting to higher inventories which could mean uh, lower average selling prices. So what we're hoping for this um, electronic sector is to lessen the lead time, uh, mabawasan yung backlog, mag- decongest yung operations once uh, this COVID-19 COVID has been eradicated. So that's it for um, the sector review. We go now to relief efforts. So hindi ko na to iisa-isahin. You can read it. And the good thing here is these industrialists are doing their fair share when it comes to corporate social responsibility uh, spearheading the relief efforts I think na una pa sila sa government eh, to, um, to procure all their resources to help uh, the country during this time of coronavirus crisis so for Ayala we're seeing 2.4 billion response package and even some companies not listed in this chart like C DNL has um, pledged 100 million and other companies na rin. so on the government side what they did is of course impose travel ban to limit the movement of people during this um, to prevent local transmission na rin. also enhanced community quarantine which we don't know yet if it would be extended beyond April 12 and the 300 billion stimulus package from the BSP 
and the 276 billion emergency power vested to uh, President Duterte. Also, multilateral agencies has pledged ha or have pledged, such as ADB, amounting to around 1.6 billion dollars. And for some companies, uh, particularly yung mga na nasa liquor manufacturing, such as San Miguel and Emperador, they have um, shifted their operations from um, manufacturing of, from distillery naging, they wanted to produce alcohol na lang. So which is very good, lalo na ngayon, sobrang merong shortage ng alcohol. So our strategy for COVID-19 is when it comes to investing in equities is steady accumulation of defensive stocks. Ito yung mga stocks na that could waver in during this time of the crisis or yung mga involves essentials like um of course the retailers as mentioned yung pure gold and the big banks who are still operating like uh, BDO, BPI, and Metrobank. And with the telco sector na may surge ngayon in demand in mobile data. So Globe and PLDT. So yun yung i-accumulate nyo. And since we have, we have yet to, um, to find the bottom of this market, whether since masyadong volatile yung market kaya it's hard to predict if nag bottom out na or are we on the consol consolidation phase na so our advice is to to buy in dips lang in case um, in case the opportunity presents and of course avoid speculative stocks for now lalo na ngayon may mga operations na or may mga companies that are on a limited operations or not operating at all so, kung may mga listed companies, iwasan nyo muna yon since when first quarter results come out, they might incur um, heavy losses in their books. Then, diversify your portfolio. Um, a way to diversify right now is, I think interest rates are going up. So, we advise you to, to be selective on your stock picks and allocate some of your portfolio in even short term uh, notes um, some banks have offered bonds kasi low interest rate environment na yun. so banks are taking advantage of this releasing bonds so you might want to subscribe for those but ang movement kasi nung, uh, nung 10 year rates is pataas since mag nagiging risky yung environment natin ngayon so, I think um, setting aside of your portfolio to bonds would be good. And last but not, uh, not the least is cash is king. So, in times of crisis, it's better to load up on cash. Of course, for yourself to buy essentials. And if you, if you want to invest, uh, it's better to, to be very liquid during this time. And to sum it up, uh, the impact of coronavirus pandemic was felt across markets, starting with China, then going towards Europe and going back in Asia. And of course, naramdaman na natin sa Philippines. Um, across all sectors, financial and commodities market, you can name it. So. Next, PSEI was hammered from last year's issues regarding um, contracts, contracts with Manila, Manila Water, and the ever-present issue of the POGOs. But for 2020, um, misfortune started with the uh, Taal volcano eruption and the spread of coronavirus. So, uh, one more thing to underscore is that we are very positive on banks, telco and consumer sectors 
that and we believe that they will thrive during during the uh, the first quarter or in the near term also government is doing its part uh, to provide stimulus to the economy and lastly value plays are present all over the market so you can see prices that are at a huge discount this is a very good bargain but again hindi pa natin ma-assure if bottom na bata because the uncertainty will be uh, ma maalis lang yung uncertainty if meron, may, there's a strong lead na for a cure or a vaccine for the virus then maybe that's a good time to, to tell na this, this is the bottom kasi we have we're, we're, we're unsure pa if the virus is peak here in the country or even worldwide so it's hard to predict if the market is bottomed out but for now stick to your um, strategy value place um, accumulate on dips on the stocks that we've mentioned the sector the, that we've mentioned and diversify your portfolio and lastly manage your risk so we go now to the Q&A portion for your questions you can just um, type in your comments below then we can attend to that so I think that's it I hope you learned something today in our special webinar and ayun maraming salamat and keep safe stay indoors sa mga frontliners natin mabuhay kayo maraming salamat